Hello students. Welcome to a video by Didemi IS on, on an overview of anthropology as an optional subject. Anthropology as an optional uh, has become very popular in the last uh, three, four years, four, five years, you can say, whether it is your UPSC civil services exam or whether it is state public service exams. Uh, it is doing quite well. A lot of people are taking it up. And uh, so this video is about an overview of anthropology as an optional. What kind of an optional is anthropology? And uh, how you can you know improve your chances of getting a rank while taking anthropology as your optional. So why to take anthropology as your optional? That is our topic for today. Okay, so what is anthropology? Anthropology, you know, uh, is although a very popular optional, but still a lot of people are not aware regarding what is anthropology. The reason is that you know, uh, it's not a very common course in our universities and colleges like you know you have english or you have history geography political science anthropology is not a very common subject and that's why a lot of people are not aware so whenever you you know talk about anthropology if you google anthropology the kind of images that you get is you know, these kind of images where which shows you know evolution of man or these kind of you know which shows a uh, comparison between the skulls or other features of say a man um, this is a chimpanzee, uh, this is an orangutan, and this is a macaque. Macaque is the common monkey. So these kind of images, you get skulls, you get, uh, you know, uh, evolution images and all those things. So basically, yes, these are anthropology. These pictures do belong to anthropology, but anthropology is not just this. These are, this is just one aspect of anthropology. Anthropology is a very diverse and a very interesting and a very holistic subject as they say you know some common you know sentences and phrases that are used to explain what anthropology is you know it is a study of human beings study of human beings especially of their origin development so you get you know, this is origin and development evolution customs and beliefs as well so not just you know origin and evolution but also our customs and beliefs you know if a society follows certain customs if you know a tribal society has a uh, certain kind of festivals, certain kind of sacrifices, a certain kind of religious practices or, you know, mortuary practices or, you know, whatever, whatever is part of their custom and belief. If it is so, so then why it is so? And why and how is it different from other tribes in other parts of the world or other cultures, other societies in other parts of the world? Very interesting subject. Then, you know, anthropology. Someone has said it's the study of what makes us human. So anthropology is all about what differentiates us from other animals and makes us human. It is a study of man through time and space. This is a very, very uh, common definition of anthropology. Study of man, of course, but across time and space. Across time means since times immemorial, since, you know, we were, uh, you know, uh, not a man. See, we're not, since we are not even, you know, uh, you know uh, recognizable as a human being you know times when we were australopithecus or even before that from then till date so across time and across space whether this you know uh, evolution happened in africa or parts of europe or asia wherever all that is covered even the modern societies even the tribal cultures of whether it is the american continents whether it is africa europe asia all are covered australia so across time and space, a very wide canvas, that is what anthropology has. So very interesting subject. So before you know, you know, uh, you know, whether you have to take a subject or not, the first thing that anyone and everyone should know is the syllabus. Syllabus, you know, is the Bible of any course without knowing the syllabus, it's absolutely impossible, you know, to uh, excel in the subject syllabus is what we start from and uh, here of course i have not given the entire syllabus the entire syllabus in detail we will share in a video wherein 
um you know we uh, i will go to, you know unit wise uh, i'll pick up the entire syllabus i'll point out you know unit wise unit 1 study from this source unit 2 from this source unit 3 from this source so we'll go unit wise when we discuss you know the sources and how to prepare them but here i'm giving a brief uh, overview of what entails in paper 1 and paper 2 so paper 1 is basically you can see you know uh, this is paper 1 this is this is paper 1 paper 1 you see human evolution archaeology archaeology world why world because paper 2 has archaeology for the indian subcontinent and this is for outside indian subcontinent archaeology the findings of you know the past cultures whether it was iron age paleolithic mesolithic neolithic those kind of stuff uh then the sociology part so this culture there is society what is culture what is society uh what is marriage and how marriage is different in different parts of the world different societies will we'll come across very unique examples and you will be really surprised to see the kind of diversity that you know human uh, the humans have across the globe kinship the kind of you know relationships that we have family even family you know we take it for granted me my father my mother you know my children my wife but that is not you know uh, how family looks like uh, across the globe so much variations economic organization we look at our markets and stuff and we think that everywhere it must be the same but it's not like that not every society has a market you know some societies do not figure in profit and loss in economic exchanges you know so lot of variation in that political organization not every human settlement every human society or human culture has a government not everyone has an election you know there are some primitive tribal political systems you know starting from all the way from a band society when our hunter gatherers ancestors roamed around in a band starting from there how we reached the current uh, position where most of the countries have states as in governments whether elected or uh, you know dictatorship whatever but today most of the countries have states most of the cultures have a state so we'll start from pre state you know uh, political systems to today's political systems then anthropological th okay so there is religion as well very interesting topic how religion evolved you know what are the different types of religion how religion is different in primitive societies in tribes and how it is different in you know our modern industrialized societies anthropological theories this is one of the most important chapters for ev you know any subject if you have to understand the subject you should know the concepts and the theories given by the scholars of that subject and this is the unit which covers the theories one of the lengthiest chapter in anthropology then you see human genetics and applications of anthropology by now you will already be thinking that what kind of subject is this you know we are talking about we are talking about family marriage like you know uh, sociological aspects and then we are jumping on to genetics you know we are talking about evolution and archaeology and then we are talking about religion so what kind of subject is this but yes this is what anthropology is it is such a wide and varied subject it covers you know uh, you have biology the genetics part you have archaeology you have sociology parts of sociology you have parts of history okay and uh, some parts of political science you can say it's a mixture of you know a lot of different fields and that is what makes it so interesting you will not get bored if you are getting bored reading the political part jump to the historical part still feeling bored jump to the biological part want to explore something else jump to the archaeological part okay and on top of that we have several other interesting you know topics in paper 2 if you go to paper 2 you will see again there is archaeology from indian point of view and after that you have demographic profile of india this is paper 2 by the way 
demographic profile of india india is such a diverse country what are the different ethnic and linguistic elements you know what are the different you can say races that form the indian subcontinent uh, demography what are the different languages you know spoken in different corners of the country traditional indian social system you know you know about caste system you know about uh, you know uh, patriarchy and those stuff now you know here uh, we, in, in anthropology paper 2 we have uh, some of that as well then you have indian villages you know indian villages someone said that you know the indian villages are republics in themselves a very renowned scholar said that indian villages are republics which means that indian villages are self sufficient you know they are good enough to run themselves without outside interference you know that used to be at some point of time now that cannot be said but yes indian villages are very interesting and we'll study about you know the indian villages as well emergence and growth of anthropology in india how anthropology evolved in india who were the main scholars who led to development of anthropology in india from colonial times till date it began as a colonial pursuit because the colonial masters they wanted to control the uh, race uh, or the you know control the uh, people of india for that they wanted to gather more knowledge so that you can use, they can use the knowledge to uh, you know dominate the indian masses and that is how anthropology began as a colonial pursuit of knowing the subject race but then it after independence it went into uh, it went into a different directions and uh, after that you know um, uh, a lot of uh, indian anthropologists came on the stage and they left their imprint by giving some very valuable you know theories uh, which are applicable for uh, anthropology inside and outside india then there is a topic uh, or a group of topics which are indigenous and exogenous processes socio cultural change in indian society so you know the only constant thing we know that is the only constant thing is change everything is changing and so is society the society the culture they are also changing rapidly you know we are moving uh, you can see you know a uh, lot of nuclear families now joint families are getting lesser and lesser you see lot of uh, you know village folk are getting urbanized you see you know the western you know westernization entering the villages in their clothes in their uh, music and food preference uh, you see you know a movement of the tribals from tribes to caste society so usually you know the tribal societies don't have caste but there is a continuous movement from tribe towards caste which is called tribe caste continuum a lot of societies that you know a lot of uh, uh you know uh, castes that we have today at some point of time we are tribes for example you know you must be knowing the maji tribe maji caste mr maji uh, was jitan ram maji was a bihar chief minister for some time and you must have also have seen that a very inspirational movie of nawazuddin siddiqui you know very uh you know cuts across the face of the mountain to build a road he says jab tak todenge nahi tab tak chhodenge nahi so you know that that uh, that that uh, population which call themselves the majis now they are classified as one of the lowest castes in the society in bihar however few centuries ago they were one of the munda tribes so from a munda tribe they entered the caste society and you know uh, found themselves at the lowest rung of the society so these kind of changes going on continuously in the society then you know some festivals that we have like you know uh, a large number of festivals that we have today we 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 take it for granted that these festivals were always there say for example ram navmi diwali or any such festival you will think that they were always there but you will be surprised when you read this that a lot of these festivals have been appropriated from the tribal societies they began in the tribal cultures and then the non tribal cultures appropriated those festivals and made them their own similarly there is a you know a two way traffic there is a movement from the other side as well a lot of our festivals you know have entered the tribal society in a modified form so these kind of you know exchanges this kind of socio cultural changes uh, impact of different religions like impact of hinduism impact of jainism buddhism islam christianity uh, and other religions on the tribals on the villages 
we'll study that as well tribal india this forms half of the syllabus of paper 2 i have just mentioned it in one sentence but it's actually a very a vast subject it talks about the current status of the tribals in india what are their problems what are the solutions what is the government doing what are the constitutional provisions like the fifth schedule the sixth schedule you must have read about these things uh, in polity lakshmikanth fifth schedule and sixth schedule but you will be reading it in much more detail in anthropology how fifth schedule and sixth schedule arrangements are helping the tribals whether they are helping at all if any change is required there are many you know uh, commissions like one a very popular one called the zaza commission Vir virginius zaza his name is virginius zaza he was a scholar uh, under whom a panel was set up and it has given a very vast diversified very holistic and exhaustive recommendations on how to improve the condition of the tribals uh we we'll look into why there are tribal unrests why there is movement of tribals you know you uh, for those you know who are not aware you can do one thing after this video you can look into google and see what is pathal gadi movement it is happening in india it is a tribal movement going on right now but lot of us are not aware why this is happening why this uh, you know unrest all those things will be part of paper 2 very interesting again so a very very diversified subject we have human evolution you know we have archaeology for world and india we have culture society marriage kinship you know economic organization religion political organization you have theory part you have genetics you know very very scientific and modern stuff then you have how it is applied you will be surprised to know anthropology has applications in lot of things you know anthropology is applied even in making the cockpit of your fighter jet you know the fighter jets that we have whether it is indian made tejas or whether it is raf you know rafal made in france the cockpit or the you know suit that the you know the fighter pilot wears that uses anthropology you know the apache helicopters they have a great you know system of shooting down the target you know where uh, the helmet that is worn by the pilot that helps in pinpointing the target you know that uses anthropology so there are a lot of modern uses there uses uses of anthropology in sports how sports in you know performance can be improved one simple example is you know knowing about the genetic makeup of some populations can help us excel in sports for example you must be knowing that uh, the you know people from jamaica and uh, you know like you know Usain Bolt or others, you know, in, from Jamaica and other countries near Jamaica, they do really good in uh, one sport, which is you know your field and track running. You all must be knowing Usain Bolt. So they have some you know something in their gene, uh, which helps them be better runners. This this has a lot of genetics into it. It is uh, you know more biology than it seems. Yes, there is practice and dedication, but there is also some biology and genetics in that. looking at this fact you know the sports authority of india is trying to create a program wherein we have the siddhi tribe they are of african descent they are found in western and southern india you know they are trying to groom them for india to bring some medals in uh, athletics so you know you, you see anthropology is utilized in sports as well so we'll see many more utilizations in crime uh, you know the the latest technologies which are used to solve uh, murder cases uh, for example you must have heard some of you must have heard about sheena bora murder case so using of genetic technology to solve crimes you know to settle disputes about parentage you must have heard, heard about andy tiwari case andy tiwari was a politician and someone just came up and said that andy tiwari is my father and andy tiwari was not ready with that so you know genetic testing was done so all these things are applications of anthropology so very interesting with lot of you know practical applic application as well and in paper 2 again we see so much diversity you have the indian tribes the indian villages you know indian traditional social system again archaeology and demographics are also there 
so all in all a very very interesting subject now let's get into so so we just saw what briefly what anthropology is and what all topics you can expect to study in anthropology but then the main reason for making this video is this why is it a good optional subject let's think why it's a good optional so some of the points that you must have heard in the market short syllabus but how true is that some people say that anthropology syllabus is very short if you compare to history or geography but is that true no it's not see upsc obviously will not make a syllabus you know for a subject which is really short and then for some subjects syllabus is very lengthy that will be very very unfair you know that cannot be done that is unfair so it's not you know like the syllabus is very short yes a few topics are lesser in anthropology compared to many other um, you know subjects and it seems that the syllabus is not that lengthy but it's not you know as if you look at the syllabus and you can spot that it's very short it's not like that but still when we say the syllabus is short there is some substance behind that the thing is that the syllabus and the questions that come in the exam are very factual in nature very factual so for example if i say history in history if uh, you know there are very analytical questions for example there a question will come that you know in the medieval age in the medieval or early medieval age and late ancient age in india there was uh, deurbanization deurbanization which means that the cities were in ruins cities were declining and more and more people were limited to their villages not leaving the villages villages became self sufficient people stopped doing any trade and they got limited to their village producing in the village consuming in the village trade declined and the country got deurbanized and all the cities declined that is one theory you know but when the question will come in history obviously there is a lot of analysis you know you will point the view of scholar a b c who say no there was no deurbanization because coinage is present this is that that and then scholar b c d they will say no there is deurbanization and then there is the scholar xyz saying yeah there is some you know some truth in both he will take a middle path and then he will give a conclusion uh, supporting one of the views or taking a middle path lot of analysis is involved that happens in lot of other optionals but if you look at the questions in anthropology the questions are very very factual in nature for example if the topic is regarding australopithecus or say neanderthal man neanderthals they are one of our ancestors most of their fossils are found in europe and sent, uh, and and uh, uh, australasia oh, sorry europe and eurasia that is the region between asia and europe so neanderthals so a question in anthropology on the topic neanderthals will be uh either if it if it's a say you know a 10 marker it will say just give the the phylogenetic phylogenetic position of neanderthals which means you will just say that this is where they were found the fossils are found this is the time period when they uh, thrived uh, you know and this is the you know uh, these are the findings you know that show that they had a culture these are their findings of their houses these are the findings of their tools these are the findings of their skulls and jaws and whatever very factual in nature very straightforward if a topic is say genetic engineering if the topic says genetic engineering the question will say describe the method of genetic engineering no analysis as to you know whether <coughs> genetic engineering is a boon to the society or a bane to the society it is good or bad what is the ethics involved in it you know those things are not there <coughs> excuse me it's more about what is genetic engineering what are the methods involved that's it so whatever you read in the book 
or whatever we you know teach in the class the questions come straight forward from there so the factual nature of the syllabus and to the point questions exactly ekdam to the point question not much analysis to the point questions and factual nature make it seem very short to cover you, you can easily and quickly cover the topic you don't have to look at the topic from <clears throat> too many dimensions okay then it is one subject that is doable in 3 to 4 months with proper guidance so not many optional subjects can be finished properly in 3 months but anthropology is one sub, sub one such subject because of this point number 2 because of the factual nature and because of to, to the point questions that are asked you have to prepare the topic to the point not going too much into the analytical part and that's why it is doable in 3 to 4 months in 3 to 4 months with some proper guidance you can finish the uh, optional so most of you will be able to finish the optional before prelims and then after prelims what you will have to do you will revise you will not be doing something new you will be just be revising that will enhance your chance of getting good marks limited resources and none to be read cover to cover so if you look at the book lists that are prescribed for say history optional or geography optional you know the the, the book list is endless at least i can say for history optional because i have also studied in the past history as an optional so i know the book list is you know inexhaustible for modern india we those who have his, you know those who don't have history optional those who study history as only as general studies we limit ourselves to spectrum you know but for those who have history optional they will study spectrum they will study you know uh, bipan chandra they will study uh, shekhar bandopadhyay plasi to partition and all these books have different way of covering the syllabus while rajiv wahir or spectrum takes a very neutral unbiased view you know uh, bipan chandra takes a totally different you know uh, kind of view and then shekhar bandopadhyay takes just one second just one second guys yeah so shekhar bandopadhyay takes a totally you know different point of view and so they have to read all those books you know because it's not that there's repetition every uh, author has written it in a different way all together so a lot of books to be covered but that's not what is the case with anthropology in anthropology you have a very limited number of books very limited number of resources to be covered and that too none of the resources has to be covered from cover to cover none of the books have to be covered read from cover to cover none to be read cover to cover uh in one of the videos that i'll be making soon after this video i'll be going through the syllabus unit by unit and i'll let you know which book to read and from that book which parts to read so there will be specific parts you need to read only those parts and not the entire book so we'll have some limited resources limited books and from those books also we'll read selected and limited topics and not the entire book cover to cover so that is also what makes the syllabus short in a way and then this is a really important thing for the last few years you will see that upsc is giving some 5 6 days gap between the general studies papers and the optional papers so you have essay paper gs1 gs2 gs3 gs4 and then there is a 5 or 6 day break and after that you have your optional paper so now this 5 6 day is very very crucial and you will be surprised to know that anthropology is the only optional which you can revise the entire syllabus in those 5 days of break before your mains optional exam so after gs those 5 days you know this is the only optional subject that can be revised nicely and this has been this point has been reiterated and repeated by one after the other many toppers several toppers taking anthropology have reiterated this fact that they were able to revise you know the whole syllabus very nicely in those 5 days before the exam 
so these are the things that actually make the subject seem uh, the syllabus seem to be short compared to other optionals second thing why you should take it is you know the, the syllabus is very very interesting as we saw you know that it comprises so many different things you know, so many different aspects of human life that it makes the syllabus very interesting and you must be aware that uh, not everyone clears the exam in the first you know go a lot of people have to take second third attempts also even for those who are you know clearing in the first attempt it's not that you know they are clearing in the first year itself they are at least studying for two two and a half years and then appearing and then clearing it so which means that you know whatever your optional subject you have to study it for two three years two two and a half years or even more so a subject which you have to study several times it has to be interesting if the subject is not you know making you interested you will read it once and when you sit to revise you will feel bored and you will not revise and forget about the third and fourth and fifth reading after our first reading you will not come back to it you will not enjoy it but as is you know it's it's one of the universal facts of upsc that revision is what separates the rankers from the non rankers revision is sine qua non it is a must without revision no one has ever cleared this exam so for revision it has to be interesting if it is not interesting you will not like to come back and revise it so that is also what makes anthropology a good choice it is very interesting and you will like coming back to the syllabus and revising it no rocket science yes we talked about you know there being genetics there being archaeology and several other topics in that but it's not rocket science it's not the genetics you know as if you are going in the lab and inventing the next covid-19 vaccine no there is no rocket science and that is why you will see a lot of people are taking up optional as anthropology uh, even when they had like myself the background was history you know sorry uh, english honors but i took it and i did well with this subject so whatever your background whether you are a science guy whether commerce or humanities you can take up anthropology no rocket science the genetics or archaeology whatever there is it is uh, you know quite uh, basic and with dedicated guidance that we will be providing with that guidance you will be able to uh, ace this in a very short time okay and uh, you need not fear even if you have say any of the arts or say history or english or any such subject in your graduation that's not going to matter at all and secondly you know there is a great mix of humanities and basic science you know that also makes it interesting you know that moving on you know so finally a caveat caveat means you know you can say a warning or an alert alert that do you think you know that since it is doing really well in uh, upsc and state the subject is doing very well you know uh, a lot of people are taking it uh, the number is increasing every day more and more people coming into anthropology and a lot of people uh, you know passing upsc and state civil services with flying colors taking this subject and uh, many of them you know, are able to get a seat or be able to you know uh, get a rank because of this this optional subject they they may not have very great marks in general studies but because of this optional they are able to get in the rank list but is it that simple is it like you know you take the optional as uh, anthropology and you score 350 is it that simple no it is not you just take anthropology you give the exam and you get 350 aisa nahi hota hai it doesn't work like that okay you will have to you know still finish the subject and do well in the exam but then why are we promoting anthropology the reason is that just taking the optional will not you know get you great marks but this is a subject that gives you 
the opportunity to score great it gives you great opportunity to score great how how does the subject give you great opportunity first thing this subject is you know this subject thrives on diagrams without diagrams there is no uh, you know anthropology and diagrams are always going to get you you know great marks even if you write uh, you know it's suppose it's something that requires 150 words or say 250 words you you are not able to muster a lot of uh, points and you write say only 150 words out of 250 but then you draw a nice neat diagram you are still going to get great marks you know diagrams is what uh, makes anthropology such a scoring subject now i have written here diagrams from chimp skull chimpanzee skull to india map so it is not to scare you guys you may be thinking chimpanzee skull is it even feasible to draw you know in an exam chimpanzee skull but let me tell you it is very very easy it's not difficult at all with little practice uh, you know we will have a separate value addition class for this in the value addition class i will guide you guys as to how to practice these kind of diagrams uh, what are the diagrams that we can practice we will try to add new diagrams you know there are some diagrams that are given in the book some of them you get on the internet you know but uh, we will try to incorporate new and new diagrams you know create more diagrams so that you can try to put in diagrams in as many answers as possible and get good marks so you know uh, you may think as soon as we talk about the chimpanzee skull you will start thinking you know of it may be something like you know this kind of a complicated skull diagram you know like this but it's not like that you know the diagrams that we have to make are you know uh, there are some tricks to draw good diagrams i'll just show you one example see if i have to draw a chimpanzee skull just a second guys okay so if i have to draw a chimpanzee skull it's very simple so here we have the brow ridges here you have the foramen magnum you have the heavy jaws without a chin you know you can draw the the incisors and the canine okay very simple if you have to draw the human skull again not very difficult this is the human skull and then you can compare that while you know here is the brow ridges there are no brow ridges then you know the foramen magnum's location is centrally located and it is much much you know uh, behind then the jaws the chin no chin the chin is at present so the diagrams are very simple and suppose you know if you are uh answering paper 2 if you are answering in paper 2 and the question is regarding say the tribes of india or you know so you want to show uh, the various tribes that are located on a map of india the india map is also not very difficult the india map will be you know like
This is Sikkim. This is the place of Bhutan and then you have Arunachal here. Here you have Bangladesh, Assam here. And okay. Here you have the Indian Peninsula. Okay, and you can show the tribes that the tribes are located Bakarwals got these here. You have the you know uh Ao Angami here, you have the Todas here, you have the you know uh, Gonds here, you have the you know the Mundas, Orans, Santhals, and like that. So very simple. If you make a diagram like this and you label it like this, you know, you tribe one, tribe two, tribe three, tribe four drive five so you know we will have a value addition class where we wherein i will guide you on how to go about making uh diagrams like these you know uh, you know like india map you will be able to draw in 10 seconds and world map you will be able to draw in 25 to 30 seconds and then the skull and everything within seconds so you will be able to you know incorporate diagrams in all your answers and score really really well a well labeled neat and clean diagram is what you know the uh, the examiners are really looking for and uh, that is how anthropology gives you great you know opportunity to score and uh, you know there are a lot of tricks to how to you know and and if you see you know a lot of toppers answer copies you will see that even they are not able to make india map very nicely uh, some uh, most of them are not able to make something like this you know so if you are able to make make a map like this in say 10 seconds nothing like that you will be one of in you know uh, in the top in toppers list so so that is how you know it is quite easy then value addition for value addition as i said the diagrams are there then anthropology again you know it needs a lot of examples without examples if you're talking about to say a unique marriage practice wherein you know the guy and the girl live separately throughout their life and the girl lives with her family you know you have to give the example of the tribe in Kerala that does it. If you talk about the tribe where the you know the guy comes to the girl's house after marriage, you have to give example of the you know a tribe in Meghalaya, Garo Khasi area. If you talk about you know uh, a tribe you know that is allowed to keep guns, you know um, for rest of the us, you know guns are you know, out of bounds. We need to have a license to have a gun, you know. But there is a tribe in Karnataka. That is allowed to keep guns. You know why? Because they were allowed by the British. Because for them, they worship guns. They worship guns, and guns are very important for them. Every year, they take out their guns, they keep it under a tree, and they worship it. So, you have to cite examples. You know, you have to cite examples of tribes from across India, from across the world, and those examples we'll share with you. You will get examples, a lot of examples in the book itself, but our uh, stress will be to try and get, you know get new examples that no one cites that are not present in any of the books so that your answers are a little different from others if everyone gives the same example you know because everyone read, is reading the same textbooks if everyone gives the same examples you know it it becomes boring but if, it, if you can give an example that no one else has given earlier your answer becomes interesting so those kind of examples you know will be there case studies Case studies are nothing but extended examples. When you give a case study, you give an extended example. You you give the example by writing a paragraph about it. That this is what happens. This is what happened. For example, you know, uh, in uh, when when Ebola broke out broke out in Africa, uh, you know, in uh, Syria, Sierra Leone, uh, what happened is a lot of people were dying because, uh, despite the authorities telling them that please do not go close. To the dead uh, person's body, they were not able to follow this, you know, because uh, their custom is very important for those African tribes, and their custom requires them to hug the dead body. They hug the dead body and cry, hugging the dead body, because of which you know they were coming in contact with the body fluids of the dead, coming in contact with the body fluids of the dead, and they were also getting uh, Ebola and they were dying. So the authorities. Try to use force, but force was not working. 
you know force was not working the because for them their custom was most important they were and uh, they were not able to listen you know, they were not listening to the authorities so after you know trying a lot uh, of using force and other coercion the authorities roped in an anthropologist and this anthropologist tried to understand why it is so important for them to hug the dead bodies and then accordingly he devised a solution and explained the tribals in a different way and then the tribals left this tradition of hugging the dead bodies and the death count declined so this is an example of you know how anthropology is helpful but this is an extended example which you write like a small story so this is called a case study okay then there are current affairs current affairs keep on coming for example recently some uh, skulls and some remains have been found in uh, for example uh, luzon luzon province of philippines and we have like you know we have neanderthals we have homo erectus and others human uh, ancestors luzon gives a different new ancestor which we not did not know about you know then you have denisova caves in russia where a new ancestor have, has been found which is called denisovan then you know there was a usually there was a belief there was a belief that just one second there was a belief that uh, you know the in, the human population went through a bottleneck went through a bottleneck some 75000 years ago what is a bottleneck a bottleneck is when a species the population of a species declines rapidly to a very small number so they are very they are in large numbers and then they decline to a very small number and from here again they start growing and they again go to a large number so this when population passes through this narrow kind of passage this is called a bottleneck so there was a belief for many many decades that the human population went through a bottleneck around 75000 years ago that means around 75000 years ago because of massive super volcanic explosion the human population had fallen down to around 10000 only and after that it again grew back and all the humans that we have on the globe today they are the descendants of this 10000 so this is called a bottleneck when the entire population is derived from a very small stock so this this belief was there till last year in last year in 2020 there were uh, diggings in madhya pradesh in a place called dhaba a place called d h a b a dhaba in madhya pradesh and where there we were able to you know find some stone tools that showed that there was nothing like a bottleneck the number of you know tools stone tools found before the super explosion and after the super explosion remain the same which means the number of people using those tools remain the same which means that the human population before the super explosion 75000 years ago super uh, you know uh, volcanic eruption which is called the toba explosion around 75000 years ago before this explosion and after this explosion the human population remained constant so this you know theory that was held on for uh, several decades has been you know uh, discarded last year so this is something very important so these kind of current affairs will keep on coming and we will compile them and share with you so these kind of value addition whether it is uh, tricks to make diagrams important diagrams interesting good new diagrams which are which are not there in any of the books and examples and case studies and current affairs we will be sharing with you in value addition and you know this is also these these kind of you know value addition addition materials like examples case studies current affairs and diagrams are what add to the opportunity that anthropology offers the opportunity that anthropology offers to you know uh, score really good and uh, as i said revisability you know the subject can be revised the subject can be revised in just 5 days you know gap that you get uh, during the mains exam in the mains exam there is just a 5 days gap between your gs papers and between the optional uh, before before the optional exam and anthropology is the only optional which you will be able to revise in these 5 days and you will be able to you will be able to revise the full syllabus in these 
five days flat. Okay, so that also offers a great opportunity vis-a-vis -vis other optionals. And as I said earlier, the questions are to the point. If you uh, you know look at the syllabus and look at the questions, you will see that the phrases from the syllabus are directly picked up and questions are made. So if the syllabus says that uh, Darwin's theory of evolution, the syllabus says Darwin's theory of evolution. That is what the syllabus is, you know, phrase says, and you study Darwin's theory of evolution. And the question comes, explain Darwin's theory of evolution. The question doesn't say that, do you think you know, Darwin's theory of evolution uh, was a, a culmination of a century of scientific research and blah, blah, blah. So no evolution, uh, sorry, no uh, you know, great analysis is required. That if you read the syllabus properly, straightforward, direct questions, the topics on the syllabus are picked up and questions are made direct to the point. So that is what also makes it a great scoring subject. And last but not the least, anthropology is also very, very helpful in other papers. For example, the science and tech part. The science and tech part of anthropology is mostly about genetics. Okay? And you must be aware, if you uh, are uh, you know, following UPSC prelims papers, or even UPSC mains papers for GS3, which are you know science where science questions come or prelims, you will see that uh, a lot of questions come from genet uh, several questions come from the genetic field because this is a uh, this is a field of science that is rapidly developing and new concepts are coming up uh, now with the coming up of uh, you know the COVID-19 virus and the vaccines that involve DNA vaccine, RNA vaccine, and uh, this and that. So a lot of you know. Uh, studies being done on genetics and uh, as a result a lot of questions are expected in mains gs3 as well as prelims from topics of genetics and if you are an, a student of anthropology you will find these questions a child's play because you will study genetics in nice detail uh, you will study you know and um, genetics this topic very nicely in anthropology and this topic is going to be very strong for you and you will find it very easy. Similarly, the sociology part that is marriage, family, kinship, you know, religion, they are helpful in your mains GS1. Mains GS1 has, uh, you know, social part questions regarding women, regarding family, regarding uh, the elderly, globalization, the impact of globalization on children, women, elderly. So those parts, you know, you can, you are covering it in uh, anthropology. They help you in mains GS1. Uh, again, the essay, you know, for example, uh, last year, 2020, there was an essay question that the essay topic was, we should tell the students how to think and not what to think. We should tell the students how to think, not what to think. This was an essay topic and you know what? This is a quotation by a great anthropologist, Margaret Mead. Margaret Mead is a anthropologist that we'll be studying and this is her quotation. So anthropologist students would have jumped looking at this topic, Nese. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and I'm sure they would have written uh, essay on this topic. So, you know, we saw a lot of points where anthropology is it's not as if you just take anthropology and you score 350 no that's not going to happen with any optional you just choose a subject that because you know anudip durishetti got rank one with this akshat jain got rank two with this so i'll also get a top rank with this no it doesn't happen that way but the scope of getting good marks is great in anthropology because of the opportunities it provides by way of diagrams, by way of case studies, examples, current affairs application, you can score really well. So that's why anthropology is uh, one of the, the best optional subjects and hence in lot of demand nowadays. So this was the overview of anthropology as an optional. In uh, next few videos that I'll be making, I'll be discussing 
the book list you know what should be the book list and uh, other resources from where you can prepare anthropology how to make smart short notes you know because for devising the anthropology syllabus in uh, five days flat between the mains exam you need to have uh, your own short notes along with the class notes so if you have the notes only then you can revise you cannot sit with the books and revise so how to make notes will be one of the uh, video topics and then how to score 300 plus in anthropology optional how to uh, you know write answers that will impress the examiner to give you good marks giving you 300 or 350 plus in anthropology optional so these are the topics on which uh, we will have more videos in the coming days hope you like the video hope you uh, got to know something and hope these uh, videos will be helpful thank you for watching the video thank you have a nice day